Hi everyone, my name is Eliza, and I'm going to be talking to you about a book called You Have the Right to Remain Innocent by James Duane. He's a former criminal justice attorney, and he's currently a professor of law at Reagan University School of Law. So he's talking about different situations in this book, but mainly he's talking about why you need to be cautious when you're talking when you're speaking with law enforcement. He gives us several examples of why you need to be cautious when you're speaking to law enforcement. And he gives us several situational examples of people who did speak to law enforcement and accidentally self-incriminated themselves. And then finally, he tells us what you need to do if you find yourself in a situation where you have to talk to law enforcement. So first, let's talk about why you need to be cautious why, when you're speaking to law enforcement. He tells us that just like us, they're only human. Police officers are only human. They don't like to admit when they're wrong. They don't like to correct themselves when they've made a mistake. But also, police officers can lie about nearly every aspect of an investigation, from what the investigation is, what the crime is, who they've spoken to, what those people have said, what they're going to use your statements for. And worst of all, by you just speaking to them can accidentally self-incriminate yourself. So then he also gives us examples, situational examples, about people who have found themselves on this side. So he talks about several different examples. I'm only, I'm only going to point about two that stood out to me the most. The first is Nong Trong and the second is Earl Ruffin. So let's first talk about Nong Trong. Nong Trong in 2008 is a 16-year-old girl accused of murder of her baby. She was brought into the police station only a day after her baby died. She was interviewed for nearly two hours by the police officers aggressively accusing her of murder for her baby, questioning her nonstop without any legal representation or any legal guardianship there because she was only 16. After the two hours, she confessed to a murder that she did not commit. Spending nearly two years in prison, she was finally exonerated of this crime because there was no evidence that held her against this crime. And the jury and the judge found that after watching the video of her interrogation that she was wrongfully coerced into a confession. The second we're going to talk about is Earl Ruffin. Earl Ruffin is a man that was convicted of rape. He was convicted of rape for a crime that he did not commit. He went into the police station willingly to go talk to them and give them a statement after hearing around town that he was a prime suspect of this rape investigation. He came to the police station, provided a statement, provided his alibi, gave witnesses, but still convicted of the crime. After nearly 20 years, he was finally exonerated of this crime after DNA evidence showed that he is not the person that committed this crime. So those two stories alone kind of stood out to me. There were several examples that he gave, but now we're going to talk about if you find yourself in a situation where you have no other option but to talk to police officers, um, the author gave us two words of advice. He said, the only things that you need to tell them is who you are and what you're doing right here right now. Don't divulge anything further than that because that can be self-incriminating. And if you find yourself in a situation where you are brought into a police station for an investigation under questioning, he says to wait. Don't say anything until you get legal representation. All right. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Eliza. 